What's going on YouTube? How are you on this fine evening, afternoon, day, wherever you're at? So I am swapping supercharger pulleys out and I thought it might be interesting to talk about why as I do this. So I'm getting an eight rib pulley on my supercharger and if you can see that it's got a coating on it. it's called a sure grip coating um, there's a lot of other names for it but basically they metallurgically bond a uh, metal to the pulley so that the belt kind of keys into it and it's supposed to stop belt slip I'm gonna try this but that's not really what brought this up so this pulley is a 2.87 inch diameter pulley and I'm taking off one that's a it's a 275 and that's I went for more boost because I wanted to just have as much boost as possible and after doing that I learned uh, firsthand what heat soak is all about so heat soak on a supercharger happens when you spin it too fast or too long or it's just an inefficient blower. For reference, I've got a, a blower that I upgraded to bearings that are rated to like up to 65,000 RPM and at 6,000 RPM I'm spinning them, um, I think the calculator I used showed about 69,000 RPM is, is what I'm spinning it at or what I'm trying to spin it at. So because the supercharger gets so hot, because the bearings are spinning faster than they're designed for, what happens is the belt starts slipping because it can't get traction on the belt because the internals are getting hot and metal builds up friction when it gets heat, heat soaked. So what happens is the supercharger gets really hot, then your compressor loses efficiency, and then you basically lose the boost that you were getting. Um, a great example is the last time I went to the track, I, I was doing some, I wouldn't call it hot, lap, hot lapping, but I, was, I made a lot of runs. Um, and uh, I could not get my air intake temps down, so that the heat on the supercharger was so high that uh, I basically had to stop running the car. I was getting over 260 degrees on the intake temps, which is crazy. So I finally, you know, I didn't want to hurt my engine, so I gave up trying to try to run it anymore but I'm putting a larger pulley on because what will happen is I will end up spinning the the, the supercharger within its range um, of the 62,000 or 65,000 rpm so I calculated it out and at <sighs> at 6600 rpm I'll be spinning my supercharger 61,000 rpm max um, whereas before I was, like I said, almost 70,000 RPM. So I'll be spinning the bearings within their, their range so they're not getting too hot. So it should help with the heat soaking issue. And then this pulley should help with the belt slip issues. So should be able to take care of one gigantic issue with this swap. And it's, uh, I'll throw some of the, uh, I'll try to throw some of my my logs up. You can see that my boost was just falling off hard after 5,000 RPM, and this engine makes really good power up to 7,000, so it was tough having no boost, and the, the engine was just falling on its face after 5,000 RPM. So hopefully being able to wrap the engine up and still have boost all the way through the RPM range will definitely help uh, power levels. So. So I've got a custom tensioning bracket in here. What I'm doing is I'm going to loosen the belt up so that I can get my new pulley in and we'll see what, uh, this is a bigger pulley but the belt is stretched a little bit so we should be able to get it to work. Something I always forget, dang it, I have to remove the tension, or the, uh, I've got to remove this bolt that holds the pulley on before I remove tension on the belt. I do that every time. So I had to use my, uh, I've got a three jaw puller that I use just for swapping out pulleys. So I had to use this guy here 
to pull the pulley off. Sometimes it will bound up, no big deal. But you can see that this one's got that sure grip coating. It's got that metal impregnated in there. It's like sandpaper, but it's not. So that should help out a ton. This is the old pulley. So I even tried on this one. You can see those notches that I cut in there. I cut those notches in there to hopefully help uh, give the belt some more bite. Uh, but that didn't really help. So this is a 2.62 pulley and that one is a 2.87. So this one will spin the blower well within its uh, operating range rather than this one spinning it way outside of it. So I got to get back together. So I got the pulley on, the belt's on, the tensioner is uh, next, and I'm excited because I shouldn't need as much tension on this as I had on the last one, which is nice. So I've got a little, I've got a little bracket here, it's custom made. So you can see that there's this pulley right there that guy that is actually the the tension pulley and then below it there's an idler pulley so on the bottom side of the belt it's really hard to see in there anyway so on the bottom side of the belt there is a idler pulley and then this is the tensioner so all i have to do here is loosen this nut And that forces the pulley down and then I lock it in place. That is pretty dang tight. So we're going to Leave that there and see what see what we get. I did notice over here now with this bigger with the bigger pulley that the belt is kind of hitting on. There's a bolt right down in here. That one rubbing just a little, but we're gonna send it. All right, so I got that tensioner tightened up. And all I gotta do is snug down the front bolt on the pulley right there and it locks it in place. The only thing that I would say that I dislike about this setup is that there, it takes up a lot of space in front. So aside from that, it's awesome. All right, everything's locked down. I will make sure that my supercharger pulley bolt is snug one more time now that I got tension on everything. There we go. Air conditioning line back in place. Get the you gotta get some more couplers back where they need to be. My charge pipe here. So we'll get the charge pipe back on. Him all snug down, and then I've got the uh, the air inlet will be pretty much done. There we go. So there she is in all of her glory. Hopefully that helped explain some uh, a little bit about heat soak and also pulley ratios and, and what you're really calculating here. The downfall of centrifugal blowers is there's always a max. And this engine is way too big for that blower, but I'm making it work.
I'm still getting a few pounds of boost. So that's kind of the, the main thing. The, there are tons of calculators out there that will calculate the impeller speed. You have to know what supercharge you have, what it's rated for, and how fast you can spin it if you really want to get down to business with it. Man, on those clearances. Barely enough to squeak through, but we made it. Got to keep the air conditioning. All right, well, I've got a few other things to do on the car. I've got uh, a manual brake pedal assembly that's going to give me the correct ratio that I've got to put in. But I'm going racing this Sunday, so we'll see what this does. I'll um, I'll get some graphs or some logs, rather, of, of boost and where it comes in and falls off on my on my data logs. I think that'll be cool. So aside from that, hopefully racing this Sunday goes well. I got new rims and tires in the car. Got some uh, Mickey Thompson ET streets, so that should help as well. So I think now it's time to go test and see where the boost comes in at and see where it falls off at and see if that pulley actually helps with the belt slip. So now is the fun part. So I've got the, uh, the new supercharger pulleys on. Runs good. I'm gonna data log and see just how much uh, how much boost I get. But also what I really wanna look at is the intake temps. And that was the whole point of going down in supercharger pulley was to get the intake temps not to spike as much under load because we're not over spinning it as much. But also with the pulley that I got, now it shouldn't slip. So before I only had boost up to like 5,000 RPM, now I'm gonna see if I can rev it out, see if I can boost all the way up to 6,000, which would be amazing. Uh, actually, 6,600 is my rev limit. So we're gonna see if I get, we're gonna see if I get boost all the way up to 6,600, and also it should. We'll see how it comes on. We'll see what I what I get over the course of the of the pull, but I'm excited. We'll see what uh, see what I get. Now let's see what she revs out to here. See where we get boost. Man, I took that all the way to the rev limit. I didn't hear any belt slip on that. Man, I'm curious what the I'm curious what that data log is gonna show. That was pretty good. That was second gear. I wasn't watching to see how much boost I have. I know that it's going to be less than I had before. I already made that trade off willingly, but uh, at least now the, the heat soak won't be as bad. I did see that it got up to 180 during that, so still high, but before it was getting up to 260. So, I mean, that's, that's an 80 degree difference. That, in my book, is a win in itself. Because usually when I made a pull like that, I'd be over well over 200 degrees almost instantly so that's fantastic that, that makes me feel good about that now we'll just have to check the data log and see what it looks like well looking at the data logs it looks like I got up to eight pounds of boost at 6,000 rpm I revved it out to 6622 and uh, I think it dropped down a little bit up top, but not not terrible. Not like it was. Yeah, so it looks like up top I still had five pounds of boost at 6600 RPM, which before I had zero. Big old goose egg. You can tell it just fell on its face. So now I've got boost all the way up to 6,600 RPM, all the way up to red line, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna tighten, so I still got some room to go on my, uh, on my tensioner. I'm gonna tension the valve a little bit more, but man, am I happy with that. The intake temps were better. I kept boost all the way up to red line. So shout out to 928 Motorsports. Their sure grip coating on the pulley is way better than uh, going without. They also have a great calculator to calculate your impeller RPM um, so that you can actually make sure you're not overspinning your blower. So 
I did before get like 10 pounds of boost with the other pulley. So obviously I gave up a little bit of boost, but now I've got reliability, no belt slip, and I got power all the way through the RPM range. So I'm gonna call that a Well, way. you can see on the data log, that white line right there, that is the manifold temp. And we got up to about 220, 224 right there in between third and fourth gear. So it's still getting hot, but the nice thing is, look at that, it came right back down. So that's good. I started off the run pretty hot already because I was in the staging lanes idling. So my intake temps were 150 degrees to start off with, which is not ideal. So we're gonna have to find a solution for that, but it's ran good. I got a, what I end up with a 12, 12.3 at 113. And I, I need to get my 60 foot down, but I'm just one wheel peeling, so the driver's side tire spins a lot and the passenger doesn't, so I'll have to rebuild the track lock or get a new diff. That's fantastic. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here. Check out 928 Motorsports if you've got a Vortec, Power 9, tons of superchargers. They've got 